between Molsey Boat Club and Thames Rowing Club. And both crews getting away nice and cleanly. Thames maybe the better of the two starts. A couple of seats up in the opening 10 strokes. I understand this Thames crew is drawn from their novice and development squads. So they won't have been together long. And they won't have been rowing for long. So I imagine that's a great feeling for them coming out of the shadows of Temple Island with a lead. A lead that, albeit, is not very big. Molsey and Thames will be two crews well acquainted with each other. Thames, of course, rowing on that tideway stretch, which also hosts the boat race every year. Molsey rowing closer to the Teddington area, South London, Thames Valley. And actually, that shot just showing us how little there is to choose between the two crews. If anyone has the lead, it's probably Molsey, but about a canvas at this stage as they come past the quarter mile mark. So both crews going at it, hammer and tongs in. It's great to see even in the heat, such competitive racing. It definitely makes it interesting for us when we're commentating to see good, uh, closely fought races. The crews are incredibly lucky as well that the conditions are so are so fantastic today. You know, very, very minimal wind, um, because often crews find that when they come out of the end of, you can hear some good support there, when you, when you come around the end of Temple Island, often the crosswinds can really strike you and you can find yourself being pushed into the booms. Um, so the crews are incredibly lucky today. You can see Molsey digging in deep and taking the lead. <clears throat> yeah, Molsey moving up after Thames' initial start. Molsey have now grabbed this race by the horns and are just trying to break the elastic that will connect the two crews, that intangible little connection that they have when the bow and stern of the boats are overlapping. If they can just move away there, rowing in a Stratford upon Avon shell, very interesting. If they can just about move away there, and they can establish full control of that race. And you can see a massive push has just gone on from Molsey in the past 150 metres. They've really taken this race on, and now starting to edge away from Thames with every stroke. I'm not sure if you mentioned this before, um, Tom, but all of the Thames crew have been picked from their novice squad, which. Mm. It's fantastic that they're, they're putting up such a good fight against a strong Molsey crew. So as we keep one eye on the uh, Molsey crew who have established quite the lead in race 164, heat of the development Cox 4s, race 165 has left the star Aberdeen University Boat Club on the Berkshire station. They'll have watched closely what happened to their A crew in the race, five, previous, five races hence. And they're coming up against a crew from Galway, made famous of course, not only by this, but by the Ed Sheeran song. Still a bit of a tune for me. But those two crews making their way down the course now. We can see that the crew from Galway have established a lead. And a pretty tasty one at that. About a length as they came out of Temple Island. And uh, Galway actually won the best overall college at the Irish University Championships. So they know exactly what they're doing. They don't come over from Ireland unless they've got... A lot of form and a lot of pedigree in the crew, and that's being shown at its full potential here as they've already broken that elastic. 
to lead Aberdeen University Boat Club B. There we go, some shots of a uh, Galway making their way down the course. I have to say, great experience for all of the crews, all of the athletes, to get to row on one of the most famous stretches of water in the world. Certainly a bucket list event for pretty much most rowers. And Henley Women's, there's that special feeling whenever I come to Henley Women's, of something that, that has retained its unique charm, but has developed and grown to become one of the leading events on the circuit, but it hasn't, it hasn't gone full Henley Royal. It hasn't become a commercialized beast in a word. It still retains that sort of charm and that elegance and that sort of sartorial nature that it has, which makes it such an attractive event to compete at. I think the fantastic thing as well is we've had two Olympics hosted here, which makes it just so prestigious to, to row on this course. You know, uh, pretty much everyone in the rowing world aspires to row at either Henley Women's or, or HRR and yeah, absolutely. I agree with you. And just watching uh, Galway make their way down the course. A great race from those girls. We've now got race 166 underway. Cambridge University women on the Berkshire Station crew 233. And they're up against Lee Rowing Club, their A crew on the Buckinghamshire Station crew 245. And once again, Una, we've seen the benefits of a strong start here. Lee in that oh so noticeable orange kit, really making the best of their start to lead Cambridge by around a length coming out and, and at novice level you're starting to see the disparity perhaps not necessarily in quality but maybe in just that little bit of experience in the knowledge that if you get out fast at Henley you can close the race out before it's even really begun. Definitely and, and like we keep saying so much of rowing is psychological. I, I remember one of my coaches telling me that one of the most important things you can do on the on the start so you immediately start psyching out your other your your opposition before the race even started is you're completely silent and completely focused and and it's a, a lot of it is about intimidation so you know when you get out in front you're really laying down those those in, intimidating moves I guess. Vibes, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> exactly. Well Lee have had the better of the two starts, no doubt about that, and their Cox making full and frank use of their station at the moment. But Cambridge, still in this race, there's still a connection between the bow of the Cambridge crew and the stern of the Lee boat. And Lee really chunking it along there. You can see the emphasis on the back end of the stroke. Cambridge, a slightly smoother style, but at the moment, Lee have just about a length, I would call that, as they come past our commentary booth. It's worth remembering, of course, that were you to lose in development Cox 4s, you're at the beginning of your rowing career very much. You know, the trajectory is up from that point on. And a lot of the crews who lose here lose for successive years and eventually come back and they take a trophy at Henley Women's Regatta. At the end of the day, rowing is one of the sports that teaches you about the value of persistence and tenacity. And I think even if you were to come a cropper today, you can come back again and fight again next year. At the moment, Lee in danger of being overrun. I was just about to say, I think it's so important to remember that just because one crew is out in front at the start, it does it certainly doesn't mean that the race is, is by any means over. You know, there's always disasters, especially especially on the on the Henley course with the booms. It's very easy to hit the booms and really change change the outcome of the race. Um, 
So it's it's so important that crews never give up and they're always fighting the whole way down, no matter what the what the they're being led by. Well, I think that the importance and significance of Henley Women's Regatta for a lot of these girls, there's going to be no question of them fighting tooth and nail to get their bows ahead as they come down the course. So I'm just trying to open a window while I'm commentating. <laughs> Sounds like I'm running a marathon, I'm not. <laughs> Yeah, be no question of their commitment and their desire and their dedication to try and get themselves in front of at the moment. Lee have just seen off the uh, stern attentions of Cambridge for the time being and have moved back out to around a length. So that move from Cambridge doesn't appear to have given them an awful lot of momentum as they come into what is the second half of race 166, a heat of the development coxed fours. So bear in mind, we've still got quarterfinals, semifinals and the all-important final to come in these events. Just shows the depth of entry into Henley Women's Regatta. A record entry this year, which we're delighted to say is just more proof of how much this event is growing. And right on cue, it looks like race 166, which we'll keep a close eye on because it's by no means run its course. Race 167 is now underway. Edinburgh University Boat Club on the Berkshire Station and Nottingham Rowing Club on the Buckinghamshire Station. And this is the final heat of the development Cox Fours for the immediate future. Two clubs that I'm pretty well familiar with, I have to admit. Having raced against Nottingham quite a lot as a junior. And Edinburgh, I think they had their, or they, they had sort of undergoing their heyday at the moment. But their heyday really began a couple of seasons after I left the rowing circuit. And every year, they get stronger and stronger and stronger. Back to course by the success that tends to breed even more success as they carry on down their trajectory. But at this stage, it's pretty hard to call this one. I mean, oh, there certainly hasn't been a decisive move by either crew at, at this point in the race. No, both crews had a very strong start, um, so that leaves a lot to fight for out on the course. Well, there we go. We can see the drone illuminating that which we cannot guess. And Nottingham have around a third of a length there as they approach the quarter mile mark in race 167 the heat of the development coxed fours you can just see there Lee crossing the line just gonna get some confirmed results Nottingham being warned by the umpire here straying off their line a little bit I don't think they're in too much danger of hitting Edinburgh, but as the crews are in so close to each other, it could make a difference to Edinburgh's run and Edinburgh's rhythm. Half a length to Nottingham. You can hear the Edinburgh Cox calling for a big push as they chase down Nottingham. So just watching the this race unfold between Nottingham and Edinburgh, by no means a surefire thing. Nottingham being warned again for their steering, which is quite interesting considering they've got a Cox on board. Perhaps she should know a little better, but half a length still to Nottingham. And the actual dynamic of this race doesn't appear to have changed an awful lot, right from about stroke five. Finally poised, this one. It looks to me maybe, maybe Edinburgh taking heart from the fact that they are still in contact with Nottingham mm. and have been throughout the race. Ooh. Can they now mount a late charge to try and overturn what is looking like will be a Nottingham win? While we watch this one unfold, just a couple of confirmed results for you. 
You know, development fours, race one, six four was a win for Molsey Boat Club by three lengths over Thames Rowing Club. Galway, the National University, Galway beat Aberdeen University Boat Club easily in race one six five. And race one six six was a win for Lee Rowing Club by two lengths over Cambridge University Women's Boat Club. So Nottingham and Edinburgh. So then Nottingham put on a late surge there, turned on the afterburners. They obviously had a little bit left in the tank and have moved away in that race. So we will return to the start for race 168, another heat of the junior singles. Vashon Island of the USA, Lynch 